is Maria Keller, and I'm a digital artist from Mexico, and today I'm going to teach you about actions on Illustrator. But first, let me tell you what is an action. An action is a series of commands or steps that Illustrator is going to execute when we click a single keystroke or button. On this tutorial, I'm going to show you five of my favorite actions, the ones I use almost every day, and we're going to use them to create a cute sound. All the keys and shortcuts I use are going to be displayed on the screen so you can follow along. Let's begin. The first thing I'm going to do is create a circle. To create a circle, you're going to go here in your tools panel and probably by default you're going to find this rectangle tool. But if you click and hold that click, you're going to find the rest of the shape tools. I'm going to select the lips tool or I can press L on my keyboard and this will select the lips tool. Once I have this tool selected, I'm going to click and drag to create a circle. With this tool, you can create both ellipses and circles. For this project, I want to create a perfect circle. So, I'm, while clicking and dragging, I'm going to press shift on my keyboard. That way, it's going to constrain the proportions. I'm going to make a circle around 300 pixels and release it. I'm going to change the field color to yellow. I had already selected my colors but feel free to explore and pick a yellow you like. I'm going to remove the stroke because I don't need it. And one thing I have the habit of doing is center my shape to see the relation of it on the canvas. So I'm going to go here to my selection tool or press B on my keyboard and select my shape, in this case my circle. I'm going to go here on the top to the align tools and click here to make sure that I'm aligning to artboard. Once I'm sure that that is selected, I'm going to go here to the horizontal align center and click there and then to the vertical align center and click there. And as you can see, now my circle is sitting right in the middle of my canvas. Now I'm going to work on the face, so I'm going to select again the lips tool or press L on my keyboard and I'm going to create a smaller ellipse here around this size and I'm going to fill it with a darker yellow color. Now I want to make the eyebrow, so I'm going to go here and select the pen tool or press P on my keyboard. Then I'm going to make a point here and another point here, another point here, another point here, and then now I'm going to go back to the original point to close my shape. This is going to create like a little rectangle and I'm going to fill it with an orange color. As you can see now I have an eye and an eyebrow. And the easiest way for me to create the other eye and the other eyebrow could be to mirror these shapes. But this is something I'm doing all the time, not only on this project, but almost on every project that I have. So I'm going to create a win an action to make my life simpler. To create an action, I'm going to go Window, Actions. And this is going to display the window for actions. By default, you're going to have this set that contains the default actions that come already installed with the software but you're going to create your own set I'm going to click here on this little folder to click my own set I'm going to name it Maria's Actions and you can give whatever name you want and I'm going to hit OK It is very important that you create your own set because if at some point you change computers or you want to share them with your friends it is better that I group on your own set of actions instead of having them being on the default actions. I'm going to create my first action by going here to create new action. I'm going to select that and it's going to open this window for new action. I'm going to name my action mirror because that's what it's going to do. And I'm going to set it to Maria's actions. As a function key, you can select any of the F keys to be the shortcut that every time you press it, the action is going to play. I'm going to select F11, but you can select any F key you want. And you could also add, add Shift or Control if you had already assigned this key to other thing on Illustrator. I'm going to hit Record, and it's important that you understand that, at this, that it, at this point, everything that you do is going to get recorded. So you have to be very careful with what you do, otherwise you're going to end up with unnecessary steps on your action and a messy action. I'm going to select here the eyebrow and then I'm going to press shift on my keyboard and select the eye. That way I can select both shapes. Now I'm going to right click, transform and reflect. 
and I have to make sure that I'm reflecting on the vertical axis. And here you can check a little preview to make sure that you're doing it right. And I'm going to select a, that is that makes a copy. At this point, I'm going to stop my action because that's all I wanted to do. I'm going to hit stop and I'm going to delete this so you can see the magic of actions. I'm going to select again both my shapes and this time, instead of doing all the process that we just did, I'm simply going to hit F11. And as you can see, I have condensed all those the steps as we did into one single button. I'm going to move my eye and my eyebrow to the right and I'm going to press shift so that I can move it on a single direction. I'm going to move it around here and that's it. Now I have both eyes and both eyebrows. I'm going to select all and then press shift and select the circle. That way I can select everything but the circle. I'm going to move my eyes and my eyebrows around here because I want them to be a little bit down and that's it. Now to finalize the face I'm going to go to the pen tool or press P on my keyboard and go make a line between the eyes with a point around here and with another point around here but this time instead of just clicking I'm going to click and drag to create a little arc. Then I'm going to remove the fill and add an orange stroke. Now I have a little face on my son. The next thing I want to do is create a leg. To create a leg, I'm going to select again the pen tool for pressing P on my keyboard. And then I'm going to go click here, make another point around here, then make another point around here, but again I'm going to click and drag a little bit. Then I'm going to go here and click and drag a little bit. Then I'm going to go here and close my shape. And I want to remove the stroke of this shape and fill it with the same color that the sun has. Now, if I, I'm going to go to my selection tool. And if I wanted to make the other leg, all I have to do is select my leg and press F11. That way I can make the other leg and make my, my process simpler. I'm going to select both my legs and move them a little bit up and there you go. Now we're going to do the sun rays. To make the sun rays we're going to create a triangle and to create a triangle you're going to go here again to the tools, to the shape tools and I'm going to press on the lips and this time I'm going to select the polygon tool. Now if you click and drag by default you're going to probably have a shape like this but if you mop, if you press your up or down keys on your keyboard, you can select or you can increase or decrease the number of sides this shape is going to have. I'm going to press the down key around a couple of times to go to the lowest number of shapes that this polygon can have, and it's going to be three. And I'm going to press shift so that the base of my triangle is horizontal. I'm going to make a triangle around this size and I'm going to release it. Now I'm going to go again to my selection tool and I want to align this triangle to the circle. And so I'm going to go here, select my triangle, then press shift and select my circle. And now that I have both of these selected, I'm going to press again on my circle. As you can see, the outline has already changed because by pressing on the circle, I have made this my key object. And you can also see here that it has changed to a line key object. Now, the triangle is going to get aligned to the circle and the circle is not going to move. So I'm going to go here to the horizontal line center and click. As you can see, they are aligned. Now I'm going to deselect and go and select my triangle and move it a little bit down because that's where I want it to be and that's it. Now I want this triangle to rotate around the circle and I'm going to create an action of it. So I'm going to go here to create a new action and I'm going to call this Rotate Along. I'm going to go and select as a function key F2 and I'm going to record. Now what I want to do is select my triangle and go here on the tools panel to my rotation tool or you can press the letter R on your keyboard and then I'm going to find the center of my circle and press ALT and click. When I do that, I'm going to change the center of the rotation to the center of my circle. And this window of rotation is going to appear. 
In here you can change your angle by either moving this line or typing here the angle that you want. I'm going to go with 45 degrees and here you can preview it and I'm going to make a copy of it. Now I need to do the same thing another six times and I could go again and do the rotation thing over and over again but there's a, a very important command in Illustrator that if you press Ctrl D it is going to transform again. It's going to make the same transformation that you just did by making a copy and moving it 45 degrees. So I'm going to press again Ctrl D, Ctrl D, Ctrl D, Ctrl D, and Ctrl D. And at this point I'm going to stop my action because I have already finished. I'm going to delete this one by pressing, uh, by going to my selection tool and select this one and deleting it because I don't need it. Now, let's say that I think that these triangles are kind of plain. I would have liked to make something different. So I'm going to select all the triangles except this one on top and I'm going to delete them. I'm going to do another triangle. So I'm going to select this one and I'm going to move it while I click Alt and Shift to create a copy. And I'm going to move it around here. And now this triangle, I'm going to fill it with an orange color. Now, what I want is to make this orange triangle be inside this yellow triangle. And Illustrator has a great um, mode that is called Draw Inside that can allow me to do that. So I'm going to select my orange triangle and click Ctrl X. This is the command to cut, or sorry, the shortcut to cut. And now I'm going to select my yellow triangle. And then we're, do we're drawing normal here. But if I go here and click draw inside, you can see that the outline uh, around my shape has appeared a little dotted line. And that's indicating that I'm on the draw inside mode. And that from now on until I uh, go outside this mode, everything that I draw is going to be inside that triangle. So I'm going to paste in place by clicking Ctrl Shift B. And then, as you can see, the orange triangle is being masked on the yellow triangle. To go away this mode, I can go back here and click Draw Normal or just double click outside that shape. And now you can see that I have a triangle that is a little bit more interesting. So I want to select this triangle and instead of repeating all the processes we just did, I'm simply going to press F2. And the same action gets played. I'm going to delete this one because I don't need it. And now we have the sun rays. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to give a little bit more depth to the sun. So I'm going to go here to the pen tool or press P on my keyboard and make a point in here on the leg and then go around the half of, half of the leg and make another point and then go here and make another point down and then make, close this shape. And this is going to be a shadow so I'm going to fill it with the same yellow color. I'm going to go to my selection tool or pressing B on my keyboard and I'm going to create a new action by clicking here on the create new action button and I'm going to call this shadow and as a function key I'm going to select F3 and I'm going to hit record. Now I'm going to select this shape that I just created and now can, I want to go here to Transparency, or you, if you don't have it open, you're going to go Window, Transparency, or Shift, Control, F10. And I'm going to change the mode from Normal to Multiply. And I'm going to change the Opacity from 100 to 60. And I'm going to hit Enter. Now I'm going to stop my action. And as you can see, this has already added a little bit of a, of a shade to my leg. And I'm going to mask it the same way that I did with triangles. So I'm going to select this new shape that I did and click Ctrl X to cut it. Then I'm going to select this leg and go into the draw inside mode. Then I'm going to press Ctrl Shift B to make the paste in place command that is going to paste on the exact same place the shape that we just cut. And I'm going to go outside by going again to draw normal. As you can see, this has um, a shade, 
and I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the other leg. I'm gonna press P on the keyboard or go to the pen tool and create another shadow by making a line here and then another point here and then a shaper like this. And then I'm gonna go to my selection tool and select my shape and this time instead of doing what I did with the transparency I'm gonna press F3 and as you can see the action gets played. Then I'm gonna select this one and go Control X then select my leg go into the draw inside mode and then Control Shift B to paste in place and go outside that. Now as you can see they have more depth but they are in front and I want to send them to the back so I'm gonna select both legs I'm gonna go right click transform, sorry, arrange, and send to back. Or you can press shift, control, and open bracket. Now, as you can see, the legs have gone to the back. Now I'm gonna make another uh, shade in the, in the body of the sun. So I'm gonna select the circle and go control C to cut it, I'm mean, sorry, to copy it, and then I'm gonna press Ctrl Shift B to paste it in place and now you probably cannot see it but it's uh, it's just a, this, a copy of this circle on top of that one I'm gonna undo this and I'm gonna create a new action that I really really use a lot and I'm gonna go here for this window and open Pathfinder or you can go with the shortcut Shift Ctrl F9 and this is gonna open the Pathfinder tools and what I want to do is create kind of a, hal uh, a moon here, or the shape of the moon, uh, to make it a shade of this uh, circle, to make it look a little bit like a sphere. So I'm going to select this shape, and then by pressing Alt, I'm going to move this shape. And when you press Alt, you're going to create a copy, and I'm going to move it around there. Now what I want to do is make the circle uh, get subtracted by the circle that is on top. So I'm going to create an action of this. And I'm going to call this minus. And as a function key, I'm going to select F4 and I'm going to hit record. I'm going to select the shape and select the other shape. And go here on the Pathfinder tool and call and select minus front. And then I'm going to stop my action. Now, as you can see, I have the shape that I want. And this is very useful because let's say you have a triangle and then you have another triangle and you want to make the subtraction of both of these triangles. So I'm gonna select both of these and then just press F4. And you can see how just how with one button, we already have that Pathfinder uh, tool assigned here. So I'm gonna delete this because I don't need it. And I'm gonna select this half moon that we did or this moon that we did and I'm going to press F3 so that the shadow action gets applied on this. And now you can see that we have a sun with more depth. And finally, we're going to go again here to the shape tools. And I'm going to go here to the ellipse tool or press L. And I'm going to create a little ellipse here on the, on the feet. And I'm going to fill it with a gray color. And again, I'm going to send it to back by pressing Ctrl Shift, open bracket. Or you can go right click, arrange, and send to back. Now I'm gonna show you the final action that I think it's, it's amazing because I use it a lot. I'm gonna create that new action and I'm gonna call this export. And as a function key, I'm gonna select F7 and I'm gonna hit record. Now let's say that I'm done, because we are done with our shapes, and I want to save it in different formats, because sometimes clients uh, need different types of files like JPEGs or PNGs or PDFs or the A file. So I'm gonna go File, and the first thing I'm gonna do is save my file. I had already selected this file, so nothing happened. Then I'm gonna go File, Save As, and this time I'm going to create a PDF and I'm going to hit save. Then I'm going to go file, export, save for web. And now I'm going to create a PNG 
and I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to find this folder where I have been saving my files. And I'm going to call this sun transparent. And I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to go again to save for web, or you can press Control Shift Alt S. And then I'm going to create a JPEG and I say that I want it in very high resolution and I'm going to hit save and I'm going to click save again and now let's say that we're going to do that again Control alt shift s to bring this dialog back again let's save for web and I'm going to create a JPEG and now let's say that our client wants this in a, in a bigger resolution that we already have so I want to go here in the percent that maybe go to 100 and this one is going to have twice the number, the, the, sorry, the width and height. And since this is a vector image, you're not going to lose any resolution. And I'm going to hit save and I'm going to call this sun 2x. Okay, and I'm going to stop my action. Now, this export action that I just created, every time that I hit F7, is going to do just as I told it save first the document, then save a PDF, then make a a JPEG, then make a PNG, and then make one that is twice as big. And as you can see, unlike the other actions, this one has a little toggle dialog here. And what this does, and I'm going to actually play the action so you can see it, I'm going to press F7, and as you can see, right where the this little square is here on the actions, it does stop the action. And what it does is giving me the opportunity to stop the action where I want to probably place an input. Now say that this PNG, instead of just being like that, I also want it to be twice as big. So I can just easily do this without having to do all the process and create a PNG image that is twice the size and save it. I can probably overwrite this and this is then, let's say that on this JPEG, I don't need that big quality so I'm just gonna go back to 50 and what this is what this toggle dialog is giving you the opportunity to actually put an input in here and I'll say that okay I don't want I want to save this like this but I don't want to be I don't want it to be called sun 2x I want it to be called sun twice size so I have this power by having this box checked to hold to to toggle this dialog on or off. I'm actually gonna turn it off so you can see. I'm gonna show you the folder where I have these files here, and I'm gonna actually delete them all so you can see how when I play this action by pressing F7, that folder is going to get filled again with the ones that I have assigned here and since the toggle on of dialog was off at any point it didn't stop it just used the names that I had already told the software to use when saving the file and this is a very um, good action because if you already know that you need to save on different formats on different size then you can make an action of it and just click a button and Illustrator is going to export on all those formats that you need. This is the end result of our tutorial. Uh, now I would encourage you to look back at your own work and see which are the things you do all the time and try to create an action of it. I am sure it will save you a lot of your time and make your work more efficient.